four long years have passed since from deep in this forest emerged another world, the world of mist. A computer game like no other, with fiendish puzzles, a labyrinthine plot, and an interface so beautiful it seduced people who don't normally play computer games into wandering inside and getting lost. Now, just as Miss fans were about to give up hope, the sequel, Riven, has finally been published and landed straight onto the American bestseller list. The games were created by two brothers, the Miller brothers, and the story at the dark heart of both games is a family saga. It's not the only instance in Mist and Riven where art and life have become mixed. The younger brother, by seven years, is Robin. He's the creative engine, designing the worlds and composing the music. Rand is the older one. He's a self-confessed computer geek who spends more time looking after the business and presenting the brother's public face. Robin's the dreamer. Um, he latches on to a dream and, and he wants to go with it. I enjoy working with Rand. He thinks very, very analytically. He has the ability to come and look at a situation and just, you know, logically think through it. They came together to create their world, not in Silicon Valley or even Seattle, or in any other high-tech town, but in Spokane, a city surrounded by forest in Washington State, northwest USA, about a hundred miles from the Canadian border. It's an average American town, except for, well, Twin Peaks was filmed not far from here. Rand and I were working at opposite ends of the country. He was in Texas, I was in Seattle. And we decided we needed to kind of be together, work in the same place. Um, at that point, our parents had just moved to Spokane, so we decided, why not? Accidental home or not, the harsh reality of Spokane's industrial grime and scarred scenery has influenced the surreal look of Riven and Mist. The aesthetic is something where we tried to mix a lot of familiar elements with many things that were very foreign and different. Uh, almost strange. I think for non-gamers, it's, it's the, the idea of, of a vacation on a desktop. It's the idea that, that, you know, for a relatively small amount of money, I can go to a different place. The success of the Mist trip earned the Millers and their publishers large amounts of money, about $160 million, making the brothers the richest people, in Spokane anyway. But instead of buying expensive cars and big houses, they bought new offices for their company, Cyan, that looked curiously like something out of a mist theme park, and funded the entire development of Riven, a world ten times bigger than mist. Uh, it starts, as a matter of fact, exactly where mist left off. Um, however, the player doesn't need to know anything about mist to play Riven. It's pretty much it's independent. Um, this is kind of an interesting piece here. This was one of the first things we designed that kind of defined uh, the look of one of our main characters, Gin, and uh, this was his pipe. We designed it initially on the computer, but then later we had it made into this prop, so it was, real, it was kind of exciting to be able to hold something that came out of our, the world that we were creating. It made it very, very tangible. This was almost a sidebar. Riven is more of the main story. It's where the fractures lie, where the, the, the father and son have been divided. It's where the uh, wife and husband have been divided. It's where the peoples have been divided. It was almost where the brothers were divided too, as the pressure to produce something more spectacular than Mist told, and the development time stretched out beyond three years. Rumors emanated from Cyan's offices. There was a split. The brothers play it down, but at that point, a clear separation of roles occurred. You know, there was kind of a little bit of the syndrome of too many chefs in the kitchen at one time, and um, we kind of, at one point, just had to make the decision, okay, Rand's going to do this part of it, I'm going to do this part of it, and uh, after we made that decision, after we kind of broke off, Rand became more producer, I became more director, it worked really well after that. Now Riven's complete, Robin is at home thinking about his next project. It may not be another mist, and it may not be with Rand, 
because it's storytelling he really loves and he's frustrated at trying to tell them through an interactive game. The fact that it is a non-linear work tends to destroy the narrative. You've got this player wandering around a, a, a world which is kind of just half environment, half narrative. And um, they tend not to take the narrative part of that world too seriously when they can just change the narrative at any point. It's interesting to note that Robin, not coming from a film background, I think would like to pursue more of a linear storytelling, to see where that goes, to see if he can tell a story better and evoke those emotions. Please join with me. Rand was invited to Macworld by Steve Jobs. Once there, he grilled Jobs, not about the future of Apple, as you might imagine, but about his other interest, film company Pixar, producers of the computer-generated Toy Story. I don't know whether it would be movies or another video game or a game of, of completely different sort. Um, the medium's young. I don't know what will happen, you know, whether, the, whether the ability to tell stories will improve as we go on or whether it'll stop here. The fact is there seems like there's a lot of potential there. I mean, we, we live in a world that's interactive and we get plenty of emotion, plenty of stories out of that. The more we can mimic that, the more impressive worlds we'll be able to build.